All right, good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled council meeting for July 17th, 2023, 6 p.m. here at the Charter House. Good evening, audience, uh, administrators, and council. Uh, Ms. Burner, can you come over? Sure. sure. Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Councilman Roadwald is absent. Six members present. Thank you. And moving on tonight, uh, Chief Trustee will do the invocation unless we end up. Father Lord, we thank you for the day and all of your blessings and many favors. Lord, we pray that you keep your hand upon this meeting and our citizens, that thy perfect will be done. Bless our first responders and our troops and their families. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Moving on, uh, actions for the uh, past council meeting will be done on the August 7th meeting coming up next month. Communications tonight and to the city manager report. Good evening, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the public. We share with you the city manager report, and we will first start off with the police report, and I'll go ahead and read the stats for that. Uh, the stats are as follows. They had 290 calls taken. Uh, they took 34 reports. 106 assists, eight criminal arrests, two felony arrests, five misdemeanor arrests, one warrant, uh, 59 traffic stops, 34 traffic warnings, 15 moving violations, 1,469 business checks, and five code enforcement follow-ups, and excuse me, uh, four traffic crashes. So if council has any questions on those, I will try to answer them. If not, we can get you an answer tomorrow in a timely manner. Any questions? Thank you. Okay. Moving on to the city manager report under uh, our fire and EMS report, our fire chief, Chief Steve Trusty. Council, citizens, for the month of June, the New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 93 EMS calls in the city, 10 in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to eight fire related calls in the city, zero in Elizabeth Township. We had four EMS calls answered by mutual aid by either Pike Township, Bella Park, due to Medic 5 2 being on a response. We answered three mutual aid calls to Pike Township and six mutual aid calls to Upper Park. Our new SCBAs are in service. Uh, they, are, they were purchased through grant and budget funds. And I got one tonight I would like to show the council. Uh, also, we are starting hydrant flushings this week. Uh, we will put on Facebook what areas we're in when, when we uh, start. With, we'll start area A and work our way through to B. And we'll also put the map back on Facebook so that way citizens can see where we're at what areas will uh, work in. But. This is what the grant money that we received this year, the part of the grant money, uh, got almost $200,000 in grant money. Uh, this is the brand new SCBAs, or we carry on our backs. Uh, they're, we did not buy the most expensive, uh, but what you see here, cylinder and a spare cylinder, back plate, mask, for one seventy-eight hundred dollars So we purchased 19 of them. And also a, uh, we purchased a, a compressor to go with them. But, this newer style air packs is all electronics.
20 minutes mm -hmm. uh, short. The, the, you know, the air cylinders held in, back plate, back plate is adjustable for a different height of the fire fire. A lot different than what we used to wear. <laughs> you think? <laughs> uh, Put it on different too. <laughs> and this is called the, what we call a pass device. If the fire fire stays motionless for more than 60 seconds, it'll start to chirp. And they'll shake it to clear it. If they stay down longer, they're not moving. It has a ear piercing. What do you get? What do you get with a more expensive pack? Bigger tank or? No, more expensive. You get a lot more belt and whistles. You can get where the mask has uh, a heads-up display in the mask, and you can actually read the thing. Uh, or if you have a different type of speaker phone, or you can have where the mask actually moves into the radio, or you can talk to the, the mask. Uh, it's one of those things that all the belt and whistles are out there. But we, we <coughs> what we needed us uh, and what got the most bang for our buck. But I thought the council might see it and see where it comes from. That way is approximately 45 pounds. So a fire department went inside, I can get the gear, an air pack on, I'm going to get the air, grab a hose on it, or a ladder, or anything else, or a pair of pack, get up to 70, 75 pounds. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. 
Uh, Chief, uh, a comment on your comment from when back in the day. Uh, I noticed you put it on different. When yeah, I used to have it on. Do we still put them on? Okay, okay, you still film them over your head, and hopefully you don't hit yourself in the head room. Okay, awesome. <laughs> and and you said those are 20-minute uh, packs. No, 45. Or 45-minute 45 45 packs. 45 minutes. About 20, 20 minutes of air. What you're going to get a working time about 20 minutes. Yeah. Depending on how well you're doing. Yeah, depending on the stress level. <laughs> depending on the stress level. Or actually, uh, uh, I forget what it's called. I haven't had it for a while. Uh, adrenaline. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chief. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, moving, uh, thank you, Fire Chief. And moving on with the city manager's report, our finance report with our finance director, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Harris. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Council, and members that are attending tonight. And that's hard to follow. There's really not a lot of excitement in a finance <laughs> report. But I will go through our June report. Uh, revenue collected for the month of June is $786,638.36 for a year to date total of $5 $212,025.24. On our expenditures, we spent $731,237.17 for the month of June, a total for the year $4,440,774.85. Our beginning cash balance was $7,510,472.46. And to date, we're at $7,236,136.06. On uh, now the uh, bank reconciliations are done. And the next part of the report for income tax, CCA has collected $222,937.99 in income tax for the month of June, and a total of $1,097,260.22. We're about 11 a little over 11 percent uh, collected over last year this time. So the collections are still doing well, and that includes older collections. For the mayor's court, current month of June, they, uh, with their court fines, regular fines, they brought in $3,310 for a year to date of $27,859. And the rest of the reports are in the packet, and I'll entertain any questions. Any questions from the service? Move to accept the Second. Motion by Ms. Agleston, second by Mr. Lindsay. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. It's accepted 6-0. Move to accept the mayor's report. report. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Ms. for the mayor's report. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. That's also accepted 6 0. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Harris. We appreciate it as always. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Harris. And moving on with the uh, city manager report, our service report with uh, our service director slash assistant city manager, Mr. Kitko. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, Mayor, members of the council, members of the public. Uh, under Public Works Department, we have uh, that shelter house light that was installed. I did receive a call while I was gone. We're going to look to get that adjusted, more uh, pivoted over the parking lot. Uh, I did receive all the street sweeper proposals through last week. Uh, talked with Ms. Harris today. Uh, we're probably going to sit down early next week, go over those proposals and what works best, and then draft an ordinance based on the street sweeper and those proposals to bring to council um, for you to uh, look at. Uh, crews will be replacing some non compliant de detectable warning strips on Main Street. Those will be done by city crews this week. As you also have probably seen, many cones out some of the other corners. A and B Asphalt will be doing those. They saw, start saw cutting today, and they'll start working on those ADA ramps to bring those in compliance, and then be working on the curbs. The city, uh, as you would, uh, know, they rented a street sweeper, and Mr. Coleman had operated that for approximately 36 hours, and um, we did not get a complaint of dust or anything like that, so I think it was a huge success. 
for us to go around and do it ourselves. Um, for someone who got you know about three, four hours of training and was able to operate this uh, machine and get it around, we did almost three 20 yard roll off dumpsters, about three quarters full of debris off the streets just in one sweep. So pretty happy with it and not receiving any complaints uh, from anyone was huge. Um, under the water plant, they're still doing normal repairs. Um, we have kind of put some inspections on hold as we do, do those repairs. We have a few things going on with the plant that they're just trying to keep up to date, things that we were lacking when we were doing some of the other major jobs. Uh, clarifiers, they're still on order, uh, looking to be coming in this winter for a spring in, or early spring install. Uh, they are, uh, Burgess Snipe is currently working on our plant expansion study. They were given basically all the developments, possible commercial developments, industrial, and they're working on what could be a, a potential type of treatment that we may use and kind of give us a budget on when and where, um, uh, hold on, I hit the thing, on which uh, direction we will uh, proceed with. Clark County resurfacing project, uh, Falcon is to be resurfaced with new ADA ramps that looks to possibly start this Saturday uh, with some milling and then they'll go through and uh, fill that with asphalt. They will also be doing two ADA ramps at the Falcon and Deerfield intersection. And then Main Street Curb and ADA ramp project uh, awarded to A&B Asphalt, as I would stated, that is, um, had started already. And then Fenwick Drive uh, reconstruction phase two contracts were signed and approved by the Clark County Commission. So there, it's back in the hands of Sturm, so we'll be having a pre-construction meeting here soon with a hopeful uh, reconstruction completed and paid before uh, the end of fall. And then um, we're currently still working on the basketball court with the Carlisle Park phase one project. Our prices are coming in uh, much higher than we expected. So we're doing some digging on of that project. And in the Nature Works grant, um, it was a motion by council to do the liner. I, before we did the liner, I also wanted to get someone in to look at some of the existing infrastructure before we put this in, since we're looking at a 10 year. And uh, we met with that company out of Cincinnati today. He is working on a, uh, some recommendations and um, various items that he saw with our pool. And let's, I can tell you this, that he was extremely um, puzzled by how our pool uh, infrastructure is put together. Uh, even with some of the items that were put in in the 90s uh, seem a little different than what they are used to. So um, I will update council at probably the, uh, in about a month at the next council meeting with um, what his uh, proposals were, recommendations are that may or may not um, impact the, the liner install. And that is all I have on my report. I can entertain any questions from the report or anything else. Any questions for Mr. Pickman? So we don't have a, um, and I know that's just a dozen times, uh, no for sure start date on Main Street. As far as paving or curb? Paving, paving uh, will happen as soon as curb work's done. Um, it could be before or after the festival. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Kitko. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Kitko. Moving on to the city manager's report on informational items under discussion topics. Uh, we have the trash and recycling services uh, discussion. Um, so council chose to put that back out to bid. So in order to have a timely manner to bid, uh, we need to discuss what council wants to do with those, with the bidding options for the upcoming contract. So I will turn it over to city council for any discussion. Um, we can also just keep it as is if you guys don't want to change anything and kind of keep the same service levels with the same trash, same recycling schedule, uh, and then see what we did with that. So we're not changing a lot of things at once. That's completely up to council. Now that doesn't mean the prices are going to be the same, but at least the service levels would be right. the same. So we, what the waste management contract had in it, and the way it is. Okay. Did we? I think at one of the last meetings, I think it was you. Correct me if I'm wrong about mentioning adding in something for the baseball field dumpster. I mean, is that something? Like, didn't we say something like that? We had discussed it, but I think when we look under locations, I think they are already in there for okay. certain times of year. Uh, I think it's part of the city. I know the one down 
Addicksfield. Addicksfield is North Main Street. They get one eight yard dumpster lock in collected weekly from April 1st to August 1st. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I just. Do you want me to list this, uh, the locations that's covered? Sure. For the for you guys know, that would be the city pool, uh, seasonal. But we remove the recycling because of the issues. So that is on there. Is that something we want to bring back, or is that something you guys want to just get, no, no. Completely? get rid of it? No, we have weekly recycling. I don't think we need a dumpster now. It, it caused a lot of problems. Yeah, it's well, people are just throwing it all over the place, throwing yeah. trash in it. So we'll strike that. So now it's now to just read City Pool, uh, one sick yard dumpster collected weekly May 1st to September 15th. Okay. Then we have the street department um, that's collected weekly. It's a dumpster. City garage, water department, uh, that's a four yard dumpster collected weekly. Cemetery, four yard dumpster. <laughs> Weekly, April through November, every other week, December through March. That's to accommodate uh, the less, I'm assuming, graveside services in the winter, I'm assuming. Uh, fire Station, 315 North Church Street. That's one 60-yard dumpster. Fire Chief, is that working out? Oh, he's, he's gone. Let me put my glasses back on. Oh, he's not there. there. Okay. <laughs> so I'm sure that's fine. We'll, I'll, I'll confirm with him that if he needs a bigger one, we'll throw it in there. Then we have a wastewater treatment plant. That is a three-yard dumpster. Uh, Casters Club Weekly, <coughs> Smith Park, um, City Administration Building, and Haddock's Field. Um, should we get another one for closer to that? Shoulder? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And did those cover the one that you were, I think it'd be a dumpster for the new uh, street sweeper? Uh, we'll, we'll order roll offs because yeah. we just don't know how much debris. Okay. So whether we get them from them or the current company. Okay. What size dumps are the same one that we have here? Uh, no, they're, they're 20 off. They're 20 yard roll offs. No, I'm talking about the new shelter. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, four. Okay. Four yard. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there any other events we want to cover? Any other location? I think so. Did we want to throw anything in there for our community cleanup instead of having to go through Smith's roll off? I'd ask Howie on that. We would have made it easier. Don't you? Make, would it make it easier for you? The Do you use the roll offs for that? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And you had, what, three this year or last year? Or Two solid waste, one C&D, and they're all 30 yards. 30, 40. They're, I think yeah. they're 30 or 40. I can't remember. But we usually get three. We were it was four, so maybe we could put three. Yeah. Three 30-yard three roll-off dumpsters for community cleanup. Let me ask you this. How much does it cost when you just pay for them out of pocket? I think we're right around 1800 to 2000 Okay. For each one? No, 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 no. That's total cost for them to deliver because they pick up on Saturday. Yeah. So people don't. Where my head's at is the more we add to this, the more the price is going to increase. It would be better for us to pay it out of pocket. But I wasn't expecting 1800 to 2000 Okay. Um, but that's ultimately your guys' decision. Mr. Cook? Yeah, we're about to look at these. Do we need to upgrade any of these as far as size or frequency? I think I think you're all, I think I haven't heard any complaints from my I mean you might get a, a pack month but then the rest are they're fine yeah they're fine all right getting back to the street debris you go dumping that weight in that box in that front load box I think you're going to see a note coming from the waste hauler that when they cross the scales their pricing is going up so that cost on that box is going to go up so they're going to come back and want some increases because your street debris is what like a gravel i would imagine it's probably very heavy yeah it's so when we do a 20 yard roll off we only fill it two thirds so we stay within their truck weight for hauling but we only do roll offs it's the easiest way to do that has that been taken out of the hazardous waste category we're at wherever Smith's roll off does with it. We just hire it, tell him we're doing it for street sweepings. He tells me two thirds and he takes it. We don't have to do anything with it. Right, I understand that. But normally, if that used to be classed as hazardous waste, it could be. He doesn't charge me like an exponentially large, like a, a $100 EPA fee or nothing like that. Okay. Do we have a timeline on when we want to go out for bid? ASAP. ASAP, I'm going to start working on it as soon as I get final direction from council. So we want to give enough time, should a new hauler come in, they have enough time to do all the transition with ordering new carts, delivering the carts, waste management to come clean up their stuff. So we want to get it out. 
we only have until the end of some end of December. So as soon as we get the finalized uh, information from council tonight, I'll be working on that in the next week or two to get it out. Because I know we're a year away on trucks. Uh, I would assume the toters are anywhere from 90 to 120 days on delivery after they place an order. So we're going to be running fairly close. That's why it's important to get this done. So I wanted to get done last week, last meeting, but it was we had to push it off for this week. So, so I kind of want the final discretion tonight from council so I can move forward with getting the final bid package and getting it out. And we should at least let that bid run. I think last time we let it run for, I think there's a minimum of two weeks that we have to do by state law. And I could be wrong, it may be three weeks on that. But we have to go through the legal bidding requirements and then open the bid and then award it. Then you guys got to do legislation on that. So we do need to hit the ground running for sure. Thanks, sir. Thanks, Mr. Cook, Mr. Lindsay. So Ms. are we adding the Ms. event? Hang on. What do you think? Hang on. I think you have oh, a I'm sorry. No, you're good. Yeah, he's just in there. <laughs> Mr. Kiko, the 30-yard roll-offs for the uh, citywide pickup, would 40 yards be better? Does the 30 yards get full? No. Uh, two years ago they did. I believe last year they were real close. This year I was I didn't even have probably a third in each. So could those be reduced to two forties and do away with the thirties? And then see how that is and then adjust it the following year? I usually do two solid ways because that's pretty much everything and only do one C and D, which is you tear this building down, you can put it in there. But usually three is good because solid waste is what everybody does. Yeah. Yeah. It's one is one probably was right at full this year, but with two being a third, you know, you're three, three, three would work. I don't know if I'd go any less. If they're not full, it's. It's, waste, yeah, it's wasting space and still being charged for it. I'm just trying to look at the money aspect, maybe save some. Yeah. If you went to a 20, do they have a 20 yard roll off? I thought they did, but I'm not sure. I don't remember. They do. We use it for like the sweeping debris. Okay. So maybe three of those would be better than the 30s. And they, at least they'd be full. I've had years with 40s full. I've had years with 30s. Have it. It, it. You just don't know. Yeah. This depends on what people bring. We haven't had it so consistent that we can say, yeah, this is what we need every year. I think what we need to figure out is just, you know, just count. You guys want to have his dumpsters, whichever size you go with, yeah. in the yeah. bid or out the, out of the bid. I think it should be in the bid myself. That way, they're guaranteed to have them at whatever. Price the contract says. Yeah, but it may it may bump up the price of the everyday user a buck or so. I'm mean, not for every dollar, but you never know. But some people that may not use that service may feel that you know why should I have to pay for this dumpster that I don't even use? So I mean, either way, the city's going to pay for it. I would never see it out. That's my two cents. Either way, I don't. I mean, I don't use it. I don't have that kind of stuff anymore. But right, you know, it uh, it's a service to the to the citizens in the community and it's their choice if they choose to use it or not mm -hmm. you know can they quote it both ways so we know how much we're actually paying for the real loss i think you're asking a lot for such a small thing yeah <laughs> well i'm just then i would leave it out <clears throat> just what do you say no. sounds good Mr. In or out? Leave them out. Say yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay. okay. So we'll just, I'd say go with that. Okay. Sounds good. Any other changes to the contract? All right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Oh, no. Where are you at, Mr. Grimm? Uh, 3B containers. What container? Three B. Three B. So, are you proposing that the residents can use whatever container they so choose? Okay. Uh, 
because that's going to eliminate a lot of potential uh, energy. The other flip side to that is it also may shoot up your price because they're waiting, they're counting on that revenue generated from the car rental, so they might build that into the price regardless. I don't think it'd be as much, yeah. uh, but that's something you consider. Um, I, my service at my house is I can use whatever, and it's nice. It's nice, but we all, it's also not cheap either. Uh, so that's some of the things you guys would have to think about, you know. Um, but there is a liberty to not being confined to their containers, for sure. So you could, for example, because you know, we, we haven't been there, so you can get, get any old black trash bag and fill it? And pick well, it up. I don't, yeah, they can put anything out. They go trash bag on the ground. So if you put seven big old trash bags, they'd have to take it? They take it. Oh. If it's in just a normal uh, Home Depot container we get from, you know, like I said, Home Depot, they'll take that. I think there's like a maximum weight per thing they'll pick up or maximum load, but we never come close to hitting it. A guy two doors down remodels his house all the time. He's always got so much stuff there and they take it all the time. So there is a liberty in that. Yeah. But like I said, there's a premium you pay for it, for sure. My curiosity would be, again, maybe you can answer it because you live in a community like that. You have a lot of trash then. You like people that set out bags and animals get into it and you get a lot of trash going around or something. Yeah, I got a metro park right behind me, so it's all wooded. Now, to piggyback off Mr. Bond, that would be a good thing to ask for double pricing on because that's such a big thing. So that we can do. We can say, hey, what's your price if we can use our own container versus if you we force rent from you directly. Now, that's something that is warranted enough to be impactful. Well, in that case, uh, we should stipulate if we use our own container, we should stipulate that the something animal is connected into something that can be sealed. Like a, like a lid type plastic. thing. So I think what I'm getting from council's not in there is sitting allowing people to put trash bags out. But if it's just a general container that has a flapping lid of any, where they get it from is not an issue. Yeah. Isn't part of what I'm hearing. Okay. That's the more just trash bags that uh, raccoons, <laughs> skunks, dogs yeah. can get into. Yeah, yeah. It, we, it happens, believe me. Yep. And we saw that when we had bags prior in the old contract. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Okay, so two two prices, one with mandatory carts and one without mandatory carts. The the thing on the carts, if if we do away with getting their carts, I think, because the citizens are used to having those carts to to roll their trash out and it's got the lids on it, it then they have to go buy a cart or trash cans. And then it depends on the trash service if if they will if, if they want a contract where they, the driver has to get out and physically empty the can, if they're going to use the arm, they're going to want their, their, uh, a cart like they have or their cart like we have now. Yeah. And those aren't cheap to go buy. Yeah. Council, another thing I just thought of too, not to interrupt your discussion, but it is a warranted point to actually interrupt. If we do the no cart, I'm pretty sure that's going to take away your service levels. Your, yeah. your service levels your discounted service levels. Your service levels are now not a thing because everyone's just doing the same thing. So yeah. how can you charge for a 96 gallon cart versus a 64 gallon cart versus a 35 gallon cart? Yeah. So that's something we have to think about. I still think it warrants both bids. But if you So would we get for for instance if we go a bid both ways without carts and without carts and with, say company A wouldn't want to bid on the one without parts, but would they still potentially bid on the one with? Um, it would be included in the bid package. It would be one big, but with two different pricing sheets, if that makes sense. So it'd be like, in your bid, tell me what it'd be with parts or without parts. What I'm saying is, is there companies out there, and I don't want to make same names, because I don't know, but would there be a company out there that says, we don't want to do any any contract with, without um, bid because all of our Trucks say have on. Oh, they very well. They just wouldn't, yeah. they wouldn't respond to the bid. Okay. They wouldn't supply a bid. Okay. And then we could wind up with a trash service. Okay. <laughs> the only problem in a pistol with a citizen having his own can, it has to match up with that one arm bandit. Mm -hmm. And I believe Otto is about right now the only one that makes that one that definitely will match up. That is the one that most of the haulers are using, is the auto brand. You can buy containers here at Lowe's, uh, Menards, but 
they won't match up. The other problem being that when he sets that can back down, if I, as a homeowner, happen to see him set that down too hard and break that wheel off, oh, yeah. now we're going to have a little problem between me and the hauler and saying, who did what? Yeah. Yeah. If the hauler owns it, it's his to replace. Yeah. I just had mine fixed. I broke the lid off of mine. I came out and fixed it. <laughs> you mm -hmm. had two of mine. So. Yeah. Um, Mr. Cook made a, a very good point. Um, and what they've started doing, and I'm not know if you're aware of this or not, instead of having specific arms that fit the piece that he's talking about, I know where I'm at, they have something that comes down and it's a flatbed, and the thing goes on top of it and latches that way. So it's not an arm, it's more like a platform that lifts it up like that. But there's still a risk associated with, especially what you just said about who broke what and then who has liability and who's responsible to fix it. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So you just want to stick with the cans? Well, he said we're going to get this. Oh, I thought you said you'd bring the cans. Draw my motion to remove. Oh, okay. Gotcha. gotcha. Okay. okay. So what we have now is add shelter house location, new shelter house, and then uh, one bid with two pricing, carts, no carts. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. All right. Thank you. No problem. The dumpster at the fire station's good. Yeah, he's here now, Andy. Oh, there you are. Hey, uh, is your size of your dumpster device for your, your fire department? Do you need a bigger one? No, we're good. Okay. If that changes in the next day or two, let me know. All right. We good? We're good. Awesome. So I'll move on. So another thing on here is the zoning uh, code, uh, codified ordinances. That is something council is uh, currently reviewing. It's a big section of our code, so it's going to take council time to get through it. But that tells us, you know, how tall someone's grass can be before we cut it. You know, if you can have uh, something in your driveway that's obstructing vision across it, how high fences have to be in front yards, et cetera, stuff like that. It's a pretty rather large bark document. So the council's going through that with the hopes of maybe looking at it and taking some things out of it that are kind of antiquated. Uh, so that will be coming up in the next few months. Um, upcoming legislation, we have a liability insurance renewal. We have capital improvement plan. We have some annexation and related legislation for the Arbor Homes Residential Development. That is the one coming in next to the elementary school, New Carl Elementary. And we also have a donation bin ban. So the legislation will explain that. That's a little gist of it. We are having a lot of issues with people putting donation bins at parking lots and gas stations or Dollar Generals or IGAs and they're just not well maintained and they're overflowing with all kinds of stuff on the outside of it. So it's unfortunate that we have to come to the city, but council will be deciding on that in the coming weeks regarding uh, the appropriateness of them. And one last thing that is not on city manager report. This morning I did uh, email council my notice of resignation. My last day of employment with the city of New Carlisle will be August 11th. It has been a great relationship, but it is time for me to spread my wings and move on. And that is all I have for the city manager report. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Any questions for Mr. Bridge? All right. Moving on. Committee reports. Uh, none tonight. Comments from members of the club. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, any of the above, please go to the podium. We'll need your name and address for the record. And please try to keep it to five minutes. I'll be keeping time. Kindergarten center. <laughs> Please. Janelle Zimmerman, 219 Prentice Drive. Um, I was taking a walk on the trail tonight and I noticed that the <clears throat> shelter house and things and trash can is full of graffiti again. And I just think that's such a shame. I mean, I don't know what can be done about it. I don't know how you can keep people from doing that, but it's just you guys work so hard to make the trail nice and everything, and then you walk past there, and it's, it's just covered with it on the benches and yeah. you know, on that, so. It's a game of cat and mouse, unfortunately. I mean, yeah. who can act quicker? And, you know, and Howie, I think you guys do a great job of trying to stay ahead of it. Oh, yeah, they, mm -hmm. they do pretty good on that. But I, I haven't been over there for a long time, and I just went this, late this afternoon, and. That, that was just sad. I just wanted to make a comment yeah. that that was happening. Yeah. I'm, I'm assuming you're right. The day after it hit, we went and sprayed the uh, derogatory or the uh, obscenities on there, and then we'll get back to painting it whole again. Mm -hmm. 
What, uh, what, I problem. couldn't read any of it if it was obscenity, so. <laughs> I've never heard of that. What's that happen? A handful of times a year you have to go do that? Yeah, probably less than that. But yeah, each place, it just, it just rotates. I've heard um, that there's been some leads on a few people because they know the logos of certain, mm -hmm. but it's so that's in the workings, you know, it can take a while to gain enough evidence. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Zimmer. Anyone else? All right, here we are. Two uh, resolutions. None. Ordinances. Ms. Kerner, if you would please. All right, we have Ordinance 2023-34. This was introduced on May 15th. Public hearing in action is tonight. Creating the Honey Creek <laughs> Tax Increment Financing Incentive Districts, declaring improvements to the parcels within each incentive district to be a public purpose and exempt from real property taxation, <clears throat> requiring the owners of those parcels to make service payments in lieu of taxes, establishing a municipal public improvement tax increment equivalent fund for the deposit of those service payments, requiring the distribution of a portion of those service payments to the Tecumseh Local School District and the Springfield Clark Career Technology Center, and specifying the public infrastructure improvements that benefit or serve parcels in the incentive district. So second. Motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Ms. Uh, explanation to this ordinance it has been uh, introduced in city for a long time so i bet you are glad they're actually taking action on it so thank you for reading all that this entire time this is step one and step two of our tip creation process this basically tonight just creates that tip as we go on in this process and we have a little more discussion with the developer the compensation agreement comes next but this is step one the reason we want to get ahead of this is because as we know how long it took to get through the introduction the second reading and the pause period and we still have another 15 days after it's effective after tonight uh, but again, this is just step one of step two, and we'll have some more information with council in the coming months regarding uh, the, co the composition. Any questions? Are you ready, Ms. Barney? Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Accepted 6-0. <clears throat> We have ordinance 2023-42, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on August 7th, 23. An ordinance supplementing certain appropriations contained in New Carlisle City Ordinance 2022-62. We have ordinance 2023-43, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on August 7th. An ordinance authorizing the city manager or the director of public service assistant city manager to enter into an agreement with the Ohio Department of Transportation for the decorative street light LED upgrade project on state route 235 571 dash 04.36 dash 01.05 PID number 118645. <laughs> I don't know what any of that means. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I don't know what your reason ordinance is. It must be important. I don't know what this is. <laughs> I'm just reading it for the record. It's there. I said it. Thank you. Other business would you like me to read? Sure. Oh, there's a bunch of numbers in this, too. <laughs> City Council public hearing. Um, zoning classification change for 336 Ohio and 610, 608, 606, 604, West Madison Street, Clark County Land Bank and Habitat Home Builds will um, be Monday, August 7th, 2023, during the regular, regularly scheduled city council meeting. City council action on the zoning classification change for 336 Ohio and 610, 608, 606, 604 West Madison Street, Clark County Land Bank and Habitat Home Builds will be Monday, August 24th, 2023, during the regularly scheduled city council meeting and open for any other city discussion. Excellent job. Good job. So, don't adjourn. Go ahead. No, I'm not going to adjourn. No, furthest thing from my mind at okay. the moment. Uh, <clears throat> I'd like to make a motion to break rules of council to go into executive session for the purpose of discussing public employee. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Mr. Bond. Second. All right, Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. That 
is accepted uh, six zero. All right, we'll take a quick. Well, hold on. Uh, We're gonna move to oh, regular okay. executive yeah, session. Okay. Uh, Excuse uh, Mr. Well, let's, we'll do that at the end. Come back. Okay. We'll come when we come back. So we'll need a motion to actually go into the move to go into executive session. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Ms. Eggleston to go into executive session. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. That's accepted 6 0. Right. Mr. Mayor, I move to go back into regular session. Second. Second by Mr. Vice Mayor to go into regular session. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Except at 6 0. Mr. Mayor, I move we excuse Mr. Rodewald. Second. Mr. <coughs> Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Mr. Lindsay to excuse Mr. Rodewald. Yeah. Okay. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lee? Yes. Seven six zero. All right. I'm trying to open this to make sure I'm not missing anything. Two seconds. Uh, I got it. Thank you. All right. So uh, we are under anything else for other business. Council, have anything else they'd like to say? Uh, Mr. Mayor. Sir. Mr. Bridge. The I guess I'm going to speak on behalf of council. If they don't like what I say, they're going to project. Uh, we think you've done a fantastic job for our city for, what is it, nine years now that you've been city manager? Uh, Eight, uh, nine? Uh, April of 2015. April 2015. Okay. Uh, eight years. Eight years. Uh, you've saved this city a lot of money. We appreciate everything you've done for the city, even though, you know, we've had bumps in the road here and there, but nothing that was permanently damaging to anybody, I believe. And uh, with that, I think council wishes you luck in your future endeavors. And it, it seems to us you've already made up your mind no matter what we would do. And uh, we just want to wish you well and hopefully I'm speaking on behalf of the community too, that uh, they would wish you goodwill and, uh, in, in the future. And that's all I got to say. I, agree with that. I, uh, I won't say my goodbyes because you've still got another meeting, so. Oh, I, 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 that I, wasn't I, a goodbye. Well, <laughs> I know, I know, but I, you know, I, I will be reiterate, re re if I'm saying, I, I reiterate. Reiterate. reiterate, thank you, I can't get it out. Randy, I, We've bumped our heads so many times I can't even count, but I, I've always liked it. I thought you've done a phenomenal, phenomenal job as a city manager. I mean, you're right. You, you manhandled these developments and the progress of a lot of things that I'm just surprised that you knew how to do and, 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 and take them on. So big kudos on that. Um, I mean, I, I do hate to see you go. I wish you wouldn't, but, you know, everybody has to do what's right for them. And, and uh, yes, I wish you the best as well, too. About running an ad for successor. Is there like a city manager's magazine? <laughs> there's. I can uh, email the group of Donna that we go to. Um, there's OC May. There's different boards I can put it on for sure. Absolutely. Some of the things you guys need to get together as a group, though, and let me know of is what you want to pay, what your salary range, what your years of experience. So that's something you guys may want to either discuss now, or you can have a discussion and a separate meeting. Yeah. Um, but those are some things that you might want to start looking at. Uh, your pay range, your salary range, all that good stuff. Yeah. Um, what I think you should do at this point in time is just maybe appoint three council members to a committee. And that way I can work with those three uh, and then just work out the details and get it, get it posted. That's something you guys should post sooner than later. Right. You're gonna want to late. You're gonna want to let it sit for about three to four weeks, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, and then, well, thanks you wish you require experience. You didn't have experience. Oh, I had experience as city manager. Um, I had experience in government, but you're at this point in time with the position the city is in. It's you want someone that has municipal government experience. <coughs> um, 
do I want someone that has some sort of department head level experience? Um, I would not advise bringing someone in that doesn't have any government experience at all, especially small local government experience. When I tell you, you guys got some complicated things coming up, there's going to be a, a guy in here that can understand it and understand it well and be able to execute it more importantly. Um, what we have amassed is a great administrative team, including a law director who is more inverse to help out with that transition as well, you know, as far as, um, you know, setting the standards of what needs to be moved forward. But um, the position that the city is in, you guys would want a very qualified city manager, one with some sort of prior city manager experience, preferably, whether it be a citizen <coughs> level or, you know, like a very high up in an apartment head in a bigger city to get some of the exposure that we have coming in. The, if council would like, I would volunteer to be on that committee. I think the mayor and possibly the vice mayor should be on that too. Uh, so if that needs to be a motion, I'll make it, or if council agrees to it, uh, the three of us would be what do you what do you call it? <laughs> I'm sorry. So, just a, a committee. Commit, a committee to, 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 to come up with the ad. What is that like a search committee? No, I just really get together and be like, okay, well the search committee is one thing, but once they once the application start coming in for sure. But at least start to get together and just saying, all right, you want three years experience is what your salary range you want to be, so we can put it actually on the wording of the job ad. You know, do you want three years experience? Do you want two? Do you want you know? Everyone, and I'll be honest with you, your charter is going to sit there and dictate some of that already. It what? I think the charter dictates some of that already. Yeah. Um, is there anybody else that is really, really wanting to do that? Are you guys okay <laughs> with the other three? You okay with that? Yeah. Oh, you told me. No, I was just making sure you're yeah. okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> I, have a, I have a question. Would council entertain paying my health insurance through the end of September? Um, I'm not against the idea. I'm just going to decide right now. Do you guys need time? But to... we can discuss it at the August seventh meeting. Right. I'll get you a price of what it is. Yeah. Get yeah. Some, some numbers. I also do. We're requesting to keep my uh, laptop that the city bought back in seventeen. It's outdated. But the thing about it is, I'll have the IT department clean it out. But it's a certain model they don't make anymore. And I actually love that laptop that has a digital uh, cheat sheet on top of it here. Um, so you're going to get a lot of devices from me that are old, um, especially two Macs that no one uses. So I got two Macs in my office. I'm not asking to take those because those are expensive. You can put those back through into the city through the fire department. But the uh, laptop is kind of outdated. Um, like I said, I'd be more than happy to have the uh, IT department wipe it. But I would love that as a parting gift if the council could find that. It's not valued at much anymore nowadays. It is a Mac, so it does have some value to it. But other than that, it's just going to go into a dusty corner and sit. But the contents would be the city, right? Well, I would have the IT department no, wipe it. It would be wiped. It would be wiped. By the IT department. Yeah, but is there a thing on there that we would need down the road as long as getting it? Well, he would, he would take it. All my stuff is on my desktop, too. Oh, so you're saying transfer it, not erase it. Well, no, you still have all the information. I have an iCloud account, so I can go here, I can go there, and I log into my iCloud. It's all right there. Every, all my stuff is up in the cloud. Okay. So uh, all I would do is just clear in that I, the, the laptop with all the username and account information, take it out and sit in this ID. Is that the city's cloud or your personal cloud? Oh, it's the city's. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah city's. But yeah, I mean, I think uh, if you grab some numbers, and then we can go to the next meeting or if we need to call something if you need it sooner we could do it. But that's okay with you guys. Yeah. We'll just get some numbers. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't have a problem with letting you take that laptop after the IT goes through it and wipes it. Okay. Now if we get together the three of us, is that a public meeting? No, no it's not a forum. We, we just have to get with him, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, meet up at the city building. Uh, that means he'd have come to work earlier, you know, he'd have to be at least by nine. <laughs> <laughs> He's kidding. Not really. Oh. I usually get here around nine, but anyway, that's a different discussion. All right, anything else? So we got the three plus Randy. Uh, we'll get numbers for the insurance. And the laptop, I think, is a good deal. 
do, do, I, I think we probably should do a motion on the laptop and get that out of the way. What do you think? Uh, there will be legislation to dispose legislation? of the city property. Okay. Okay. At the next meeting then? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Anything else? Move to adjourn if there's nothing else. Second. Motion to Second by Ms. Eggleston. All together say aye. Councilman Cook? Yeah. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Except 6-0.